This is going to be a quick demo on um, how to use Builda, Podman, and Scopio to replace the Docker daemon and client tools. Um, Docker, as it is right now, it, um, it runs as a daemon on your system. It runs as root. It, um, if you do, if you build images, if you do like a Docker build with a Docker file, it work, it does that through the daemon. If you actually want to run containers, it does that through the daemon. And if you want to push or pull images, that all happens through through the daemon. It's kind of a monolithic entry point for all those things. When really those uh, things can be broken out and some of them don't require a daemon at all, such as image building is really just, you know, manipulation of files on the file system and things like that. So um, Builda, Podman, and Scopio kind of break those into three different um, roles. So Builda handles the, uh, what, would, what you would consider the Docker build aspects of um the container workflow in building images and pushing them. Uh, Podman handles the uh, actual running of containers. And then uh, Scopio can handle uh, all the advanced registry operations like pushing and pulling from uh, different registries and storage types and things like that. So I'm gonna try to run through that in a simple demo real quick and uh, kind of give you a feel for how all this works in a workflow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new builder um, container called called Builder based on Fedora. So this is a kind of equivalent if you're familiar with Docker file syntax, the uh, uh, all uppercase from and then a source image. That's what's happening here. So um, if I do build uh, images, you can see that I've got this Fedora image that this uh, this build this image that I'm building is going to be based off of. Um, and if we go if we do a build of containers. Then we can see that we've created this container called Builder, and it's and it's here. Now Docker build does this under the covers. Um, for every line in your Docker file, it creates a container, you know, applies the transform that the Docker file line does, and then commits that. And there's a commit between every line. This just gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now you're in control of when the commits happen, um, and there doesn't have, there's no, doesn't have to be a layer for every every command you run with build up, which gives you some flexibility in terms of how the container image is put together in the end. Um, so I'm going to install uh, Apache and I'm going to cut here because this metadata update takes a little while. All right, and we got Apache installed. Um, if you've ever written a Docker file and you run any your package manager and then install a file, a lot of times you'll see some hack to get around a limitation in the Docker file syntax where it's like uh, DNF install whatever and and DNF uh, clean and clean all. And what that's basically doing is preventing uh, Docker from storing the metadata in a layer in your final image. Um, and because there's no way to control where Docker commits, um, in in building the container image, but because we we choose when to commit, you can act, you can run that in a separate command, and th there's not another layer of the image that you have to worry about. So we're gonna um, write out a simple uh, uh, HTML file, not valid of course, but it'll work for our uses, um, and then we're gonna copy that into our um, into our builder container. So this is just, you know, source, which is in our current directory and then location inside the container. Um, and then, then we're going to set metadata on it. This is, uh, this will be very familiar if you're doing Docker files, there's port, there's command entry point, things like that. So we're just going to set those for our image here. We're going to, there's a service running on port 80 and our, com uh, our command to run when we start the container is Apache. We'll set that. Okay, and, and now that we've done all that, we can we can run a build a commit, which cr creates you know what you would consider to be a Docker layer, right? And so this so instead of doing it after every command, we can do it all at once after we've done everything we want to do, and we can that gives you more flexibility over where the image layers are, uh, you know, where the image layering takes place. So what this is going to do is it's going to convert my builder container into an image called, um, actually I meant to change this. We will do messaging Fedora HTTP. All right. And if we do a um, build a 
images after that. Then you can see our image right here. And uh, I don't need this one. We'll do build uh, remove uh, image. All right. It's being used by a container, of course. So uh, this is a good learning experience. We'll just do build a uh, containers. And maybe Podman's using it. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Podman. Uh, remove force. Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll remove our image. Okay, there you go. And you can see that these commands look a lot like uh, Docker CLI commands, right? The the subcommands, and that's meant to you know so that you don't have to relearn all the subcommands. You know, you just use your muscle memory. Only the uh, you could almost create an alias Docker to build a Docker to Podman things like that. <laughs> um, so anyway, where was I? Okay, so. If I do uh, build uh, containers, we can see we have our builder image here. Now that we've already committed it to an image, so if we do build uh, images, you can see the image that we, you know, we did a commit to an image. Um, now this can be deleted um, because we've already, we've done all the intermediate stuff and we've committed at the end. Now we don't need this uh, container anymore. So we can just do build, uh, remove builder, and that gets rid of our, you know, temporary container that we were doing the build in. Now, uh, once you do that, uh, Builda is completely able to push to Docker repositories. So I can do something like this, where uh, this is, yeah, this is okay. And we can push, this is Docker Hub. So this is a push to Docker Hub here. Um, this upload takes a little while. I think I'm just gonna hang out here. So if we look at this image push here, and I'm not an expert by any means, but the way I see this going down is this first push, this first layer that we're pushing is basically our from. It's our Fedora base image, uh, our base layer, I should say. This next layer is the, the culmination of all the transforms we put on top of that base layer, which was um, install, you know, uh, installing Apache and putting the index.html file in there. So all the fi file system level transforms that we made, uh, that's all in one layer. Um, and then these two subsequent pushes, I believe, are the setting the metadata, the port, and the command. Uh, those are really small pushes there, and I think they only affect the you know changing the metadata on the image. And I think that that's a requirement of, of Docker. That's why they're in different uh, you know separate images. Um, but as you can see, you, you have more control over the layering um, and you can push to, to Docker Hub and you know, Docker can pull this image down. Uh, Kubernetes can pull it down. It, it, you know, this is a this is a standard image format. So, yeah, it, it, it just it just works. Um, so if we jump over to Podman, we can. Um, well, that's a lot. We can look at our images and this is our image that we built. And so let's uh, run that. So we'll do that using this command. You can see that this, it looks very familiar. In fact, you could replace this with Docker and it would work with Docker. So it's all very familiar. Um, so if we run that, uh, yes, of course, I get to change this in my demo script here. All right. So even get the container ID back. And so, um, you know, if you've got scripts that read the container ID from uh, the, the run command on Docker, it'll feed back the same thing on Podman. So Podman PS, now we can see the container is running here and uh, we can do all the same things that we could do um, with uh, the Docker command line. So we can go into the pod with exec, um, my demo is the name of the container that I gave it there. So we can just go in ls, you know, what we can go var www.html. There's our index HTML file, right? Um, we can do a podman inspect to get the IP address of our pod here. Um, and if we want to verify that, we can get the um, PID of our entry point command. And we can do an 
ns enter. Go into the network namespace of the, this PID and run IPA. And you can see that it's a uh, adapter in there has that IP address. It matches up here. And if we uh, curl from the host, we should be able to hit our container at that IP address. We'll just do that. And there we go. We can get our index HTML out of the container. Um, and one more thing that I wanted to do was show Scopio. Scopio is kind of a advanced uh, registry management tool. So it can do uh, in remote inspection of images, which is really handy. Uh, if you ever wondered, you know, what tags are available in a remote repository, Inspect will give you all that information in a really nice, uh, in a really nice way. In fact, I might just run that here. So we'll do Scopio inspect. Now, Scopio um, uses a number of uh, storage and registry formats. And so you have to specify a kind of a, uh, a format, then Docker IO Jennings, Dora, the latest. And it will pull all the uh, metadata out of the registry. And so you can see latest is my only tag and it tells you when it was created and the layers, architecture and everything like that. So Scopio can be a very handy tool. Um, when we did our build a push, build a push is, it's not calling, it's not executing out to Scopio, but it's using the same functionality that Scopio uses. Um, and the, the full command line to do that push with Scopio is this. So there's not a notion of um, pushing in Scopio. It's more copying from one, you know, registry or container uh, or uh, image storage format to another, and so you can do Scopio copy and the format that um, Builda the the storage backend that Builda uses is called container storage, and so you put that here and then its identifier in that storage type, and then Docker is the storage type for the Docker Hub, and then you can uh, use that as the push. And so that will, that'll do the same thing as Docker push this. So that's kind of all, how all these tools work together. And uh, I think it's really cool. Um, again, Scopio and Builda are daemonless. Um, Podman uses uh, Cryo and RunC under the covers to, um, to manage containers running on the system. So it really breaks them out and gives you more flexibility. All of these are built on top of a library called libpod, which can be extended in your in your own applications. So it's really cool. Um, I'll put the links in the video description below to these repositories. Check them out.